Red Sen. Red Sen. Greetings, greetings, greetings. Thanks for having me, my brother. Good night. Thanks for having me. Good night, good night. So everybody go here, you're good tonight. We have no issues. Yeah, so we're good to no go. Issues. And thanks for Vince Lion for keeping your word. You know, I said to you, you owe me one, and you were you 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 were right back at it in making <laughs> sure that you know you have me again and I appreciate that. Everything yeah. is, is intact technically, so good to go. Thanks yeah, for man. having me again. Yeah, a lot of people were disappointed last week, but no, we yeah. have to fix that. That's what we do around here. So thanks again yeah. on behalf of the whole team. We say thanks for giving us your time because you know time is precious, man. So we appreciate yeah, you. Most definitely. So before we start, just tell us a little bit of who, who we're speaking with, Rensen Hain. We say that's why I say Rensen Hain. Tell us a little bit about you before we get into the um, soccer thing. Well, I mean, I, I must first of all, you know, for the intro there, that that's a that's a very ambassadorial intro, I shall say. You know, with um with, with my dad, Winston Soso, man, uh, as you know, I dearly miss him. It, it's it's a bit a bit of sweet here yeah, when you play in those songs, and you know, but um he continued to rest in peace. You know, he continued to rest in peace. Um, I know his spirit is around looming here in me, so. That I love you, man. You know what I'm saying? And um, I could tell you this too, not to get too emotional, but just him knowing I'm doing this here and, and something that before he passed, you know, we've had this discussion and I said, Dad, I'm, I'm, I'm considering certain things in terms of the football presidency. And, and he was like, that is very ambitious, son. I'm happy for you. And please go and give your best. So um, born and raised um, in Calico. I uh, went to the primary school, the Calico Anglican School. After that, I moved on to the St. Vincent Boys Grammar School and then on to the St. Vincent Community College. We were the first in our students to actually christen the community college back then. Um, and then move on to the United States of America and a, and a, full, and a football scholarship. Um, with me being there and with me being able to learn the game of football on a different level, you know, um, played for the Simmons, a former national footballer with the youth 60s, the youth 20s, the youth under 23, and the, the senior men's. Um, you know, Yvette attains my mother, but I know in terms of the parents, everybody like, who's Yvette? But when you said a father wins, and so, so everybody knows him. So, like I would tell at times, listen, man, you can't blame me, you know? So, so is a very popular guy. So, um, but yeah, just a humble young man, man. You know, I've, I've been, I've resided here in the United States over 22 years. And, you know, because of the COVID situation, I was forced to be back in St. Vincent for stuck and stuck over a year and a half. And, you know, with me giving my life to Christ, I, I did a lot of meditating and praying and trying to figure out some things. You know, COVID, COVID made you think. COVID, you know, COVID made things so unpredictable. It made you sit back and think and wonder what's next? When is this going to end? And in doing that, I, I feel I felt led from the most side to rinse and be a voice. You know, you've always been somebody doing different things. After after I retired from football officially, um, you know, I've been doing different promotion. It was awesome vibes entertainment. And I did, I did, I did promotion in New York for about nine, ten years. I had uh, I had all white boat ride every Labor Day weekend, every Friday night, skinny, Luta, James P, DJ Taras. Just name them, man. Bomani, everybody, problem child. And uh, I got the plug because of I'm so so son. So I said, Dad, tell them guys, man, I'm calling them and I don't want nobody to charge me, man. And you don't say, you know, they say, listen, this is so son. Don't play with my son. Don't charge him no money. <laughs> so I was, no, I'm just playing, but I was able to get the whole, all these entertainers, man, and respects for who I am. And because I'm a dad and I had great relationship with these guys. And then after giving my life to Christ, I decided that I would be a more subtle in terms of what I do. So that's when I made a transition to just focus on only sports. And, and listen, I'm not judging anybody, but that was my personal decision to move from promoting our parties and, and that secular thing on to just doing sports promotion. And then in doing that, I have, I have, I have been involved in sports administration for over, over 12 years, you know. And I decided to do my sports promoting company now which is Awesome Sports International, do popular events here in St. Vincent, where the celebrity soccer, Jingle Ball, which is very big during the Christmas time, where the prisoners would play against police, 
and the, the celebrity team and all the events. So that's where I'm at. That's where it is now. That's the history. And I'm here just continue with my great ambitions and to make my dad and everyone else who know me proud, you know? Yeah, yeah. And um, I follow you um, on, on social media. I always see you talking about um, your faith and you always try to encourage people. So why am um, you taking that step to talk about your faith? Because a lot of people are scared to speak about the faith openly, you know? So why are you not scared of doing that and you love to do that? Well, you know, it, 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 the funny thing is I, I wouldn't say funny, but in me deciding to give my life to Christ and in me being the, that party promoter, right? I will talk about, yeah, Skinny coming through tonight and you're going to see Luther tonight and James E.P. And I used to be so so vibrant with it, you know, after giving my life to Christ and I'm kind of like, yeah, I just have this sporting event, kind of subtle. And I felt in the spirit like God is saying, you used to be so boisterous when you're promoting these parties and all these boats, right? Now you are so subtle. Now you've given your life to me like, all right, you know what? So because of that, I felt him telling me, go into the world, go and be bold. Speak of me without any shame. Speak of me and be bold. And man, listen, it was a probably, I think was over two years right after. And I was never, and I was never a social media guy. I actually joined Facebook, I think was October, 2020, September, October of 2020. Um, and I, and from then, and I felt him saying, Go and be bold. Speak of me proudly. Speak of me boldly. And I'm going to tell you this, Colin, man. The amount of persons who I encourage on a weekly basis, man, I'll be getting so much phone calls, so much inbox messages, people from, from all over the world. So much of the former national footballers are playing with in different countries who are coaches right now, other, who are actually presidents of football federation, sporting organizations, athletes, some in the professional world. They reach out, rented man. I'm telling you, you want encouragement because you rents and I know who was out there like a crazy guy doing so much crazy thing. You want inspiration. So even by them doing that, it made me realize the importance of me being bold in my walk with God and not being ashamed. And I'm telling you, the the, the, the positive effects of that, it is mind blowing. And all that does is encourage me to continue doing even more. Yeah, man, we need it, man, because these kids need somebody to look up to, man, because so much kids out there looking for um, a gui guidance, you know, so you've been out there and you've been so popular. That's really good for um, the kids to see, you know. Yeah, and, and even to talk about that real quick, you know, I, I, I meet, I would meet parents in town. I mean, I was even in New York this summer. I met persons on a bus. You, Mr. Haynes, I'm looking at you. I know you. I know you based in Simmons. I just want to be sure that you and I say, yes, it's me. I met parents who said, listen, my young man, my son, you don't go to church. You don't want to hear nothing about whatever, but because of you, when my young son hear you talking about rents and my young son be locked on every Sunday to hear you just encourage people in Christ. These are the things that, is, that really moved me, you know? I mean, I met people who said, rents my little daughter, she's a bit troubled. Could you, could you call me and pray for my daughter? My daughter said she would like to talk to you, meet you in person. Man, I'm telling you, the... the the, the, the positive effects of this, it's something that I didn't expect, but I'm not going to complain because now I've started mentoring programs. I have kids I mentor, young soccer kids I mentor. They call me, they reach out to me. It's 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 mind-blowing, but I'm, I'm, I'm so happy. Yeah, man. Javin, big up yourself one time, man. I see the ball and just log on. So, yeah, um, so that's good. Uh, yeah, I, I, I really like that. So, um. Where you got all this passion from, man? You have so, like, just getting to know you and watch your, um, your videos and stuff. You have all this passion about sports. Where that come from? It, 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 it's um, from since I was a little kid, you know. Um, being able to play soccer there at a Calica primary school. And what really triggered it was in a positive way. Obviously, when people hear trigger, they think it's something traumatic. Uh, but no, this is a positive trigger. When I was about, um, I would say probably when I was in the grammar school and I was with a national youth on the 16 team. And I would tell my mom, mom, I'm dreaming of getting a football scholarship. And she would say, what are you talking about? What do you mean football scholarship? Who gets football scholarship? I said, and like I said last week, Fitch Bramble has always been someone I would, you know, for, for, for other reasons too. Growing up, I'm like, I want to be Fitch Bramble. When I was in grammar school, I'm looking at, I mean, listen, Fitz, I'm not trying to call you up, but I'm going to be straight. Okay. I'm talking about, hopefully the past i know you're gonna kill me for this one 
you know, back then, you know, they, you know, looking at Fitz Brown with the pretty boy, the girls, and the soccer player, and I'm like, I want to be Fitz Bramble. And what really encouraged me, man, was he got a scholarship in 1983. And I would tell my mom, I want to get a scholarship like Fitz. He's like, you want to be, you with this Fitz Bramble? You want to, everything about, I'm like, yeah, but mom, he got a scholarship, man, a soccer scholarship. And I, listen, lo and behold, back then, like I said, back then it was pretty scarce. I was able to, I actually, had, I actually used to have visions about me getting a scholarship. And then when I got that scholarship in 2001, man, that's when my mom were like, wow. And I went to the United States. I'm just playing soccer on a high level, being able to play a division one soccer and understand the transition and just seeing the benefits. Over a hundred thousand dollars, it doesn't cost me anything. You know what I'm saying? And that was the inspiration. So at that time when I would come back to play for the same for the VNC Heat team, I would see the youths and they're like, Rinson, I mean, this was kind of like forced upon me as well, because I didn't really see myself as to care that much to inspire others or I didn't see myself as such an inspiration to others. But when the kids come in, when the youths come in, when the national team playing and I score a goal and all these youths, and I'm like, nah, I, this is definitely a sign that I have to. And I just became so passionate, man, to the point where my mom and all my friends are like, yo, you are a madman from soccer, man. Soccer won't can send you crazy. You, I would lose a game and I would cry. I would, I would, I, I used to get so emotional. So that emotion just came to the place where I just had that unselfish attitude where I got to do for others. And then from since then, man, you know, me, me retiring and being in football administration, being a head of a local organizing committee when St. Vincent traveled to the U.S. and played that game back in 28, 17, all these responsibilities. And I'm like, nah, this is not, this is not a coincidence. I must be a voice. I must be an inspiration. I must be a mentor. And from that, I just decided to just take my passion on a whole different level. And I promise you, I'm going to my grave. It ain't going to change. Nice, nice. So you're yeah, speaking about um, scholarship. Um, we had, a lot of people was confused with the Shafika Maloney um, situation, right? Yeah. Um, I wanted to take it from um, after the kids them grad, okay, the scholarship, you know, um, they pay yes. for everything. But after graduation, yes. you want to be a professional. I think that the, the, um, the confusion, a lot of people didn't understand that, that part between um, amateur to professional, the difference, you know? Yeah. So, oh, um, well, I would say this, you know, in soccer, it's a little different than in track and field. I'm going to say that. Track and field, you're running your own soccer. You play soccer with a team. You know, it's 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 different because I don't think. I mean, you look at thousands of soccer contracts out there. As long as you're good playing the team, you're outstanding. They look at you and they say, "Okay, Renton is a good striker." When he's done, but before you even graduate, you got, you know, I mean, when you enter the draft, the MLS draft or whatever draft, as you getting ready to be wrapped up with college in that last year, there are pro teams. There is a Companies want to endorse you. They, even before you get into a draft or you enter on a tryout with a pro team, I mean, 10, 20, 50 pro teams, as long as you're outstanding, they reach out to you before you even get a chance to think what you want to do. So in soccer, you will get that attention. In track and field, for like for Shafiq in this example, it's a little more difficult, you know what I'm saying? So that's why I know with her situation, it's a bit unfortunate because she's out there running on her own, proving what she has to prove. If I play soccer, and I have a good goalkeeper where my team doesn't concede a lot of goals. I have a good midfielder who knows how to go down the line, like my boy Kenai with the national team, know how to play me in. I will score the goals and everybody surrenders to score these goals, but let's let's face it. I've had other persons who have assisted in creating that goal. But then when I score the goal, they're going to say, we need a striker, we need to give him a, a professional contract. With Shafika, she's going to go out there and run. Ain't nobody going to be running with her especially when it's at 800 meters or 400 meters, unless it's like the relays, you know what I'm saying? So it's not the easiest of transition, especially in track and field. In tennis, you know, in these type of sports, it's different. In cricket, you basically don't have like a cricket scholarship. You wouldn't know if, you know, you've got to go straight into the pros. Like a student Lambert, who went to grammar school, awesome cricketer. I always said, and I'm like, listen, if you had cricket scholarship, someone like him, but as an example, but these are persons who have to go out there and the, the, the route for the pros is a little different. With soccer, if you're in the U.S. in college, you get drafted. Like Shafika, I don't, I don't, I mean, correct me. I'm, I think I might be correct. I'm stand to be corrected, but I don't think there is like a draft, you know. 
after she's done and she graduates, it's just a matter of convincing someone to give her a contract to be a pro athlete. You know what I'm saying? But with soccer, it's different. You know, you move right into a draft. You know, like like Kimani Baines. You know, he just entered the draft, MLS draft, and he was number four. Automatically, you number four. You don't have to worry. You know what I'm saying? Adidas is actually having conversation with Kimani. You know, Nike. I mean, hopefully, I'm not touting his information, but Nike reached out and said, "Hey, hold on. I know Adidas want to offer you this, but Nike want to talk to him about this." I mean, this kid is is on a verge of probably getting a shoes coming out in his MLS rookie season. So the transition is not the easiest for like Shafiq and track and field. And I know it's more difficult where now she experienced some financial situations. She has to get a job, hopefully be able to, in a very scarce situation where not much athlete track and field will just get a, a contract like that. She has to be literally so outstanding. But if you look at soccer contracts out there, I mean, you need 11 players in a soccer team, right? So when you when you want to give a soccer player a contract, you have to give an entire team a contract because you're a pro club. But with Shafika, it's like a one person got to get this contract. You know, so it's a whole different thing. It's not as common. It's not as popular. So it's even harder for her. But kudos to her, man. I, I know the situation was not the best. I see she's been got, getting a lot of help, and I really pray that she will continue to to excel and do it and hopefully bring home an Olympic goal. Her and Handel Roban as example. Yeah, man. So um, do you think we need to have like a safety net? Because sports tourism is very big in the world man you have us outstanding athlete from your country that could do wonders for your country so i think we really need a safety net for the outstanding athletes them that they, they do not have to go through what shafika went through you know most definitely most definitely like i i i um that situation it, it there has to be a way i mean and, and i said i i am being very careful like i said in a video i did on social media was I saw over 11,000 views. I'm like, whoa. I mean, it personally hit me up. I'm like, I honestly didn't expect it to get that that much of attraction. But um, like I said in our video, there got to be support. Um, the local association, you got to support. I mean, this is a star athlete for St. Vincent. She's going to run in the Olympics. She's going to be outstanding. So we have to find a way. And like I also said, not just a local association, man. We got to have these cor corporate St. Vincent got to get on board. You know, we, you know, the DG sauce, the floors, the subways, the, the rock hard cement and Orion and Orion guns are probably like Renson, man, you're calling out all my companies, bro. You put me out there, but yes, Ryan, I'll put you out there because I just believe that, you know, the 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 all these corporate St. Vincent companies, the national actually, the St. Vincent Bury, we gotta get out there and let's identify these athletes. So like if I'm in college playing soccer and pro clubs are looking at me as soon as I enter the draft to select me. Because unfortunately, Shafika and these athletes and another someone who played tennis may not be entering a draft like that. We are depending on these companies to you draft them. You know what I'm saying? You draft them. In. I ruin when you see Shafika doing well. Listen, your marketing team, reach out to Shafika. Hey, Shafika, we see you doing well. We have Vitamol. We would like you to be an ambassador for the High Rune, the St. Vincent Bury. You know, I'm just giving examples. You know, you know, you know, they got Flow Digital. Listen, reach out, you know, let, let Shafika have to make a decision because Flo's reaching out, Diesel is reaching out, and she got to make up her mind. Uh, listen, the higher better win because this is business, right? You know, let get our radio stations on board. You know, we have so much programs on the morning programs, all the programs. Let's have our athletes on these radios doing interviews. Let's have them on billboards. Let's, when you come into the airport, let us see a Olex Anderson and a Shafika Maloney billboard at the airport, for example. You know, I mean, we, and these are the things. So the transition may not always be the easiest, but there are ways, man. There are ways that we got to give these athletes the support. And everything I just said there is basically everything combined in different ways in which we could support these athletes. And you know what's going to happen? They don't have an excuse because now, you know what I'm saying? Now, Irene is an, um, she's an Irene ambassador. Robin is, a, is an ambassador for Floor Digital as an example. And like I said, all these other companies. So guess what? Financially, you're good. You're getting your endorsement. So now you go out there, you perform, you protect your brand, protect what and who you're representing, including St. Vincent, protect that flag, protect that brand, protect that sponsor, and just go. You know, to me, that's a driving force they need, and we need to make sure 
that they are supporting in these capacities. Yeah, man. Look at that. I'm today for St. Lucia, man. All the city. Oh, listen. <laughs> Listen, so you cannot pay the athlete for that listen, kind of, that kind listen, of problem, man. Yeah. Listen, I'm gonna tell you, man. I was actually heading back, uh, went to a function there and I'm on my way back because I, I was following it, you know what I'm saying? But because of where I was, I didn't get to follow. And when I saw, man, below seven seconds, man, I think it was 6.98 or whatever. Listen, this young lady, I'm telling you. Listen, I, 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 I've, I've had opportunities to connect, like you know, with you know, with the, with the, with the, with the popular, well-known world athletes. I've had opportunities to, to communicate with them, but I'm telling you, her and Shafika Maloney and Handel Roban, they are my three, man. They are my three. I, 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 Karani James, I'm sorry, man. I don't think you're gonna probably listen to this, but I'm just saying, man, like, listen, these three, St. Lucia and St. Vincent, that's that that's my push for the for this coming olympics she has been doing absolutely amazing and this young lady man she is putting saint lucia on the map in a very big way i know man that's millions of dollars addicted oh, yes. right there man millions oh, of yes. dollars man so yeah uh, we have a lot of things to touch man but before i go any further i see you hey, up with me boy can i man <laughs> yeah man listen <laughs> Listen, I, 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 and he's a kind of shy guy, too, eh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. As I you watch to, now, you know? We yeah, together, we grew up together, so. We grew up we together. Grew, yeah, man. Nice, we nice, together. Nice. Yeah, man. We went to school wow. together, everything. Yeah, man. I'm Alan, a boy. You know, the, boy. Alan, you know the thing, too, man. Ken, I didn't know all this. I said, Ken, I know even today when he saw this flyer, he, you know, he bossed me and uh, he didn't tell me this. I said, I could have found out from him how much lad he used to give to you, man. I'm nah, nah, piling. No, 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 no. We're teammates. From about maybe. Oh, teammates. Yeah, from 14, around 13, 14, we grew up together, man. And that's place soccer. We played for um, Frenches. Oh, went wow. To, we went to Bethel together and I represent I didn't know that, Colin, man. Let me find out, man. I don't know you. <laughs> what? Boy, were you smart? Because I'm going to tell you this. You with Ken I, yeah. trust me, you rather be on Ken I team than opposing Ken I. I know, man. Unbelievable. Bro. Listen, we, yo, we went to St. Lucia for the inter-secondary school tournament, bro. Wow. The whole of St. Lucia adopted the, the fella, brother. <laughs> and I developed when we play with a national team, you know, when I would come back from college to play. And he said, Young boy, come here. I was like, Who you calling young boy? <laughs> young boy. I would just give him attitude and he say, Humble, humble, humble yourself, man. I'm joking. And then from then, you know, that first time when I came back from the US, I'm thinking, you know, look. And then I heard of him, but I've seen him when I back in Thompson Sword Light. I saw him, but because I went to the US and you know. And then me and Ken I connected, man. And from then he was my roommate in all the national team. Every time we travel, he was my roommate and you know, mentoring me. And and listen, man, media in Trinidad with Ken I, I'm telling you, Ken I is big in Trinidad. When I tell you big, I mean I was there with him in VIP and boy, I felt like a I felt like a groupie, man. I be I went there with Ken I and everybody. And he introduced me to all the greats, you know, and you know, the greats there in Trinidad, all these legends. And I met even some of the the, the, the corner, Glens and the Angus, even all those players there who play for Trinidad, you know, what time when we played against them, St. Vincent, and just being there with Ken I, man. As much as I might think I'm known with Ken I, I'm telling you, bro, he is a legend in Trinidad. Walking into that stadium during the game, after the game, players even shouting, all they want 10 velops by all they want to not feel by but i mean it's i'm like it's crazy yes yeah. so can i unbelievable unbelievable such a great character such a humble soul and i'm telling you man just connecting there where can i was definitely a blessing yeah but let me get a quick story with can i right so uh, yeah. we went in st lucia to represent service to the inter-secondary school team right you know? we just won the tournament back home with a better you know so we went there and things came back came back from um st lucia i had a good tournament i met the um inter-secondary school team after the makeup right oh wow yeah man so can i pull me up bro yeah after we came back so we about the same bike and it came to me straight and said yo i didn't like your behavior it did not perform the way i expect you to perform wow yeah and from that bro anything i do in life because of conversation i take it serious yeah. man anything mm -hmm. i do in life you know that's yeah. so because i can i that really change my mindset about how to do things you know so i always be professional anything i do man i try to be professional 
So big yeah, up man, to definitely. Kenai one time. Yeah, man. Big up to Kenai, man. This guy is a legend, man. Uh, in, in in as great capacities and as great as you could be in terms of a legend. And as you see there, I had him meet, you know, Sebastian Alexander, our number five in the midfield there for the under-20 team. Pretty good talent, man. And Kenai was very impressed with him. And I, you know, you, you know, had the luxury of him connecting because I met him in training here in St. Vincent because I, I would go there and look at them train ever so often. So just him meeting Kenai and just seeing Kenai talking with him there. And I'm like, you know, and Kenai, he coached right there in Trinidad too, you know, with the Naughty Stars, the, 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 the pro club, the Caledonia. He coached their academy and coached their under 20 team. And so Kenai is very knowledgeable, man. Kenai is such a great leader, humble guy. And I know. Just to give him this plug, can I got can I got things to do for football in St. Vincent? I can tell you that much. You heard it from me. I, I figure I figure people are already looking and figuring. I know, I mean, people even when I keep back here, they say, "You up to something?" I'm like, "Is it something bad? Can I deserve to come back here and 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 and, and be able to impact and show influence on these youths and mentorship and part of a coaching staff where they could learn so much? I mean, you in a locker room and can I is there? Come on, man." I mean, even the Trinidad team, my boy, you know, Latin, he walked into that locker room with these youths, man, on the Trinidad's first game. And just Latin walking in that dressing room, you look at some of these kids' eyes, man. Yo, this is Latin, man. You know, the best Caribbean player, rated the best Caribbean player of all time. And he was there, he's hugging these youths and encouraging them, you know. I wanted to do that with St. Vincent too, but I mean, listen, you got to show respect and honor. And I, and I believe in that, you know. I would normally, I would go and talk to the youth. Normally, I would go into the locker room and be that, but I'm, I'm, I should respect because with all fairness, with me running for presidency, it would not be right. You know what I'm saying? You have a current president, you have a current executive. I mean, to me, there's boundaries, you know? I can't, because of me now going for presidency, walk into a locker room or want to, or even ask, thinking, you know, I don't think that was right. So, but still, can I was able to meet several of the players, I introduced them to him, and they were all happy to meet Can I? Yeah. Big up, can I assist on Jasmine on the live one time? Yeah, so, I know Jasmine. Yeah, <laughs> ask him, ask him. can I? This Jasmine develops. I see she for the moment I post something, boy. He said, That's my sister. That's my sister. <laughs> you know, can I don't talk much? And he said, Yeah, yeah that's yeah. my sister. <laughs> and he just said, I'm a sister and leave it alone. Like, bro, can I connect with Jasmine? To, you know, but you know, can I? A man of few words, you know what I mean? Yeah, so, yeah, 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 yeah. To Jasmine, too, man. You know, he told me yeah. that's his sister because I was like, I always see this Jasmine. And he said that's his sister. So Jasmine, big up yourself, man. Okay, so we stay in Trinidad right now. So tell us the impression the under twenty soccer in Trinidad, the, the tournament. Then we go touch the same as a team. Great, great potential. I mean, listen, the way we started there against Trinidad, we were two zero up. Trin Saint Vincent two Trinidad nil. You ain't getting a better start than that. I mean, coming up against a team who home, and I know Trinidad. They got some players there from Europe. You know, um, so just that showing alone, I mean, after that game, people saw me, can I, a lot of Trini people, they were very impressed with St. Vincent team. I mean, I, I'll be straight up with you. A lot of them said that they, they Trin Trinidad, Trinidad should not have won that game. So because of that, they said it. And it reminded me of when me and can I, when we played as well, or, or before my last game against Trinidad, they're in Trinidad too at that same stadium, when we had them one nil that World Cup qualifier, man, when they moved on to that World Cup in 2006, you know, we had them 1-0. I scored a goal, and it was uh, to the 88th minute, we had them 0-0. Zero, zero. And that same Angus Eve, to this day, I always tell him, man, I hate you, man. The coach for the Trinidad senior men right now, he came and scored a free kick at the 88th minute, 1-1, one, one, and then they scored a the winning goal at the 92nd minute. Two minutes in extra time. In the first minute and a half in the game, we have a penalty. St. Vincent and the Grenadines, our Vinci Heat team penalty in the first minute and a half of the game. As we line up here now for the penalty, very good start for our beloved Vinci Heat. Not sure which players that lining up. Looks like the captain Courtney, right? Look like Courtney. Think it is. Let's go. Let's go, Vinci Heat. Let's go. Way to start. Way to start. Let's go, boys. 
Way to start, let's go. St. Vincent and the Grenadines of Vinci Heat. Up one in the first minute and a half. Yeah, you know, you, you can't ask a better start than that. You know, as I said, you you there in a home in you know on against Trinidad at home. And they don't like us though, because like I said, even back in our time, can I I mean listen, it goes to tell you, from the moment this type of performances can I had against Trinidad and Shandell, you know, like I would go back to the US, but Shandell and Kenai, they're like, these guys not leaving Trinidad. I'm telling you, Shandell, I mean, listen, can I never left? I mean the 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 the, the FIFA, the former FIFA vice president, Jack Warner, man. From the moment this guy saw the way can I mesmerize that midfield against Trinidad, can I was with he, he gave him a contract with Food Republic, and can I never left Trinidad to this day? Can I is as big as any other legend there in Trinidad? Wow, 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 wow. So um, before we touch same as the team myself, um, any outstanding player like like somebody really caught your attention? Yeah, I, I am. I was very impressed with Sebastian, number five during the midfield. You know, very very good touches. I could see that he's definitely ready for a different level. Um, he's there in college in the U.S. as well, in Florida. And I had a conversation with him. And I said, Sebastian, I mean, quite unbelievably enough, he's not playing for his college team. You know what I'm saying? And I said, you got to get, you, you got to be on this team, bro. And that, and his college has a team, but that's a big time soccer school. But like I said to Sebastian, now that he played this well in this tournament, I'm hoping they're going to just bring him on board, give him a scholarship. What's better for him to big up to his dad, Bert, you know what I'm saying? And his, the rest of his family, his granddad, one love Bassi and, you know, the Chelsea and all his family. This kid is, is a good talent, man. You know, um, the captain, Tony, very good player. Very good player. I mean, Courtney's confidence, the way he led the boys, you know, um, I, I really think that he is really somebody that I'm thinking, and I know he's on the scene immense as well, too. You know, so I, I know that, you know, with, with, with all these different players that we have, I think that these two, Stephen Pierre, I think did well, too. That's that's a player there from Greg's, man. Such a such a good player. Sharp on the ball, you know. And I mean, and with these guys, I'm thinking the goalkeeper there, I forgot his name. I know he's going to kill me when he see me because he always see me and he come to me first off on yeah, um, that, that goalkeeper. Pick up to Ken for Volcano because I know for sure he plays for that club. That goalkeeper, man, that, in that game against Trinidad, I think he played in the first two games, but the third game, I'm not sure if he was hurt or they decided to just give him up, give him a rest. He did well. That, I mean, in that Trinidad game, the Trinidad fans were talking about it. I've actually spoken to a club that's interested in currently. I spoke to the owner of that club and also I spoke to Wade Jackson, the coach of the of the, of the boys on the 20. And he said that the club, they actually sent a represent a coach at the hotel to talk to Courtney. So I'm really wishing Courtney all the best. Like I told Courtney, I could give him any advice. I mean, I love to mentor these youths. Black man on that team played well too, you know. Um, so yeah, yeah, those were the most standing players, I think. But kudos to the entire team, man, you know. I think they did very well. Um, some moments where the, the legs got tired, but listen, these are things, it's good when you could see these things because it doesn't really have to do with the skill. It's just a matter of preparation. It's just a matter of putting the right things in place so you can get even more out of them. And I'm going to end by saying this. Even even some players in Trinidad, some former national players in Trinidad that who I sat, who I sat with there, and they all have high praises for the team. And they're saying exactly. As long as you get the right the right preparation with these team, Renson, and a lot of people are saying, I even met a, a female coach and she said, Mr. Haynes, you guys have to keep that on the 20 team together. That team in the next three to five years together will do very well. Wow, that's that's good to know. Um, I think it's Tristan, yeah, the name I was looking for. Tristan? Yeah, um, that's a um, job. It's the goalkeeper. It, it, yeah. The goalkeeper, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The name you, all, it, you all, they call me out, Tristan. I'm going to see men be like, nah, 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 you, 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 you forgot my name. <laughs> Yeah, but big up Tristan, big up Tristan, man. Gosh, I know Tristan is gonna even coming back on a plane. I'm bigging him up, and uh, but listen, Tristan, it's all love, bro. It's all love.
Yeah. Um, so before um, we touch something else, um, tell us a little bit about um, the player from St. Vincent who got drafted number four overall. That's Kenny Baines, um, son. <laughs> well. yeah, listen, listen. This kid, <laughs> even in the last game there against Trinidad, man, down the line, cut on two. Beat past the keeper right there, right at the keeper, come out, roll it right past the keeper. And now all the guy that's to do just go and just tap the ball past past the goal line. Kimani, unbelievable talent. When you talk about skill, when you talk about I'm telling you, I'm I look forward to seeing him playing in the MLS. And this kid is just 18 years old. He didn't, I mean, he was, he's a freshman in college, just started year one in college, got player of the year, just decided to go to that MLS showcase was one of the most outstanding. There were even talks that they were, they were definitely saying he's going to be in the top five. Adidas generation endorsement, endorsement contract and all of that looming for him to just put a pen to a paper. Nike trying to figure out maybe maybe we want to convince you instead of Adidas. So when you when you hear these things, for well, 18-year-old kid, I mean, it only goes to tell you. When he, when he was, I know his mom, big up to his mom, Asher, and his dad, Kenny, Kenny actually came here to, to Canada to see him play against St. Vincent, you know. Um, and after the game, I went and I was there with him and he said, Vincent, I want to score, man. I'm like, no, no, no. You weren't scoring against St. Vincent. You couldn't score against anybody. Else. You were scoring against St. Vincent. You know, but uh, but he had a good game. I think I think in the tournament, in those three games, he had about, I would say, about three to four assists. So he didn't get a goal. But when you talk about creativity, I mean, like Ken, I said too. Renzo and I give you and Chanel all my goals. I don't care about being a scorer. I just give you guys the assist. You know, he would brag about that. He said, yeah, you go and talk to the people there, man. You'll be the forefront guy. I'm a laid back guy. So Kimani has actually, he absolutely, listen, this young man, he's a force to recommend. But I'm a say this though. You're going to first hear this publicly. And I know he probably, if Kimani died, and mom seeing this, if not him, he's, he's because he's 18 years old, I am pushing very hard convince him to represent St. Vincent. You know, this summer we got World Cup qualifiers coming up. Because he's under 21, it's a fee for rule that he could actually represent St. Vincent in the meantime until he's 21 and he could decide he plays for Canada senior men's team. So if the senior men's team doesn't call him right now, let's say they don't call him this year or whatever, because you know that I mean, no disrespect to Kimani, that Canada, this Canada senior World Cup team or whatever, that, that team it's a big time team, and it's because of him at 18 years old. I'm convincing him on Come play with BNC Heat, man. Come and link up with Olex and Kyle and Connie Stewart and these guys and get some playing experience. We got we got Nations League coming up, World Cup qualifiers, World Cup qualifiers this year. So I am I am trust me, I am pushing. And 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 and, and I know as I said, with me being president, you, you know I had to give that plug, right? Affiliate <laughs> with me as president. It's even easier for that to happen. Please don't forget that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, man. You have to use all the connections, right? Definitely. So that's good. And we have a lot of things to touch, man. Um, yes, sir. Let me touch grass, grass rules, um, soccer in St. Vincent. Like, um, when the age they start to play, um, like, competitive soccer in St. Vincent? Like, for kids? Um, in terms of the kids, there's, there's different academies going on nationwide. I know System Tree Sardine has one of the biggest academies here in St. Vincent. I know there, I know Tian Garden, our technical director right now in the, on the North Lima side, I know he would be there doing different programs down there. Um, he actually told me that in person as well because he originally from that area, so he kind of go back there in his community, do some work there. I know Roger Gurley in the Calico area, I know different guys who are doing, you know, so nationwide i and i mean i like chester morgan made a post months ago and i think he's correct we need more of that you know so we have some we have a few but we could have more we could do more and you know i gotta get my plug in as well with me as president that is definitely one of the things that i am planning to do to support let's get more in every community we need to have grassroots where these kids you know like the roger girly with these youths rogers there in calico with these youths from a very early age. I mean, five, six years old, they start. But in terms of competitive, I know that in terms of the youngest competitive, in terms of like an actual competition through the FF, I think it's like an under, correct, I, I might I stand corrected, but for what I know, it's like an under 14. And then you will have an like under 14 competitive, either under 17, and then you go higher. And then, but I know that there will be some other 
small tournaments where one academy would have like a showcase against another academy. So these kids will get to play competitively, but enough is not being done. And that's, that's the reason why I want to be the president. So I have a lot of plans, a lot of plans, a lot of support, a lot of potential sponsors and partnerships. I've gotten so much phone calls from so much persons from the moment they see my information there in the media circulating of going for presidency. Listen, I'm getting phone calls from all over the world. And I, I don't know a lot of them are like, wait, so we can't wait. So it could get better and it will with me as president. Yeah, man. In Canada, it's big. Like, yeah. kid, you, your kids will start playing soccer at three years old. Yeah. <laughs> at three years yeah. old, man, if, if they're yeah. interested in soccer. And then, yeah. um, let me get a, little, a quick story. When my son yep. was um, eight years old, right? The, his team won a tournament. So, they, so the, all the winners meet up from different tournaments. Bro, there was an eight-year-old team came there. There was professional, professional, wow. professional. Yeah, because those guys, they take soccer serious. So they have a different league for those guys. Like, who take soccer serious? They have a different academy, a different league. Those guys practice wow. three times a week at eight years old, man. At eight years old, wow. At eight years, so they carry themselves, man. My son, they were scared because I see how these guys present themselves as professionals yeah. at eight years yeah. old. So we yeah. need stuff like that to identify the kids them at a younger age. So we could start yeah. grooming them, you know, because we're not until 10 and 15 and 20. Not oh, 20. not at all. Yeah, not at all. them from a young age, you know. Yeah, like I said, you know, the Roger Gordies and all those guys are doing that with them from such a tender age. And you would have this, the FIFA, sometimes you would have the FIFA showcase where, you know, occasionally you would do that. But you are correct. We need these things to be on a more constant basis. We need these things to be coming out from these communities. You know, it may not be where we, we, may, we may not be able to achieve it with like true, true, like a daycare, obviously. You know, a kid is four or five years in daycare. You're not going to go to the daycare and say, oh, we need to present a course to your daycare. But in the communities, like you said, four years old or five years old, as I said, Roger Gully, I know Roger probably like boring to so giving me another plug tonight, you know, <laughs> but listen, I'm just saying for what I see in that, in, in the Calico, Roger, I'll see Roger there with these toddlers, man, and I know other person side in up work with these toddlers and another place, so there's room for growth, but I'm very confident that it only gets better, my friend, it only gets better, I can't wait for it to get like that. Yeah, man, that's one thing, I let's push for that, man, that's very important. Yes, sir. Man. Yeah, yeah. So um, next thing, what about the females now? Well, I mean, we could do more for female football. You know what I'm saying? One of the things, like even me looking at the primary school football, you know, and in the primary school football, each primary school team, you're allowed to have, you must have a female, must. But that's one female in every primary school team. You know what I'm saying? You look at secondary school football, you see the boys. You don't see the girls' secondary school competition. These are the things that needs to change. Um, it's work. Obviously, you can't just wake up and say, I'm going to do it tomorrow. But I'm going to tell you this. The clubs here got female teams. These young girls want to play soccer. When you look at what's going on, I mean, just look at that female World Cup alone. It's an inspiration to these young ladies, to these young girls. So I know for sure that the interest is there. But we just have to put things in place to accommodate them. We have to put things in place that we're going to be able to invent these programs and stick to it. It may not be as quick as the boys because naturally the boys are better soccer players. They would learn to play soccer from an early age because it's a known thing. Like culturally, that's the culture. But now that is changing vastly around this world. So I'm telling you, with me going in there, with me being able to be able to implement a lot of things, female football, primary school, secondary school, female football as well, not just the boys. And I know even with the academies, I, I, I can definitely say I'm seeing a lot of females in these academies. But like I said, there's room for improvement. There's room for growth. Sponsors are willing. Sponsors, investors are willing. I've had conversations with many of them. You know, even clubs overseas who want to partner, like an adoption system where Send a, send a girl see me here in St. Vincent for a week or two weeks during the summer vacation. And you play against a female girl team here. And if you like one or two of the, one or two of the girls, get them to your academy in Europe. Get them to your academy out there in Asia. I'm having these discussions, man. I mean, just me putting myself up in presidency. I'm blown away by just the, the amount of phone calls and persons that have been reaching out to me. And I'm humbled. I'm grateful. I appreciate it. And all I can't wait is I hopefully be selected. 
where I could implement these things to make even female football better as well, like you just asked. Ah, nice, nice. Um, so we touched primary school. Are you happy with the, the standard of football in the primary school? Um, I would say I love the standard. I've seen some great talent, like that kid Pollard, and different, you know, that kid from Warrior who, I think it's Pollard, yeah, yeah, who got, listen, this kid, unbelievable, man, unbelievable kid. So we have some good talent. Just that primary school football finals there between Oya and the Beckway. Beckway team, big up to the Beckway team too, because Ralph and, and Ralph Stowe and, and Marlon Tusty J, those guys there in Beckway, you know, Mercury and them guys, they've they been doing an awesome job there with these youth. So the Beckway team has been doing well, very consistent in the last several years with primary school football. So I'm telling you, looking at the primary school football finals, it is, it is a lot of good talent. I've, I've had the luxury of going to several of the games as well. Look at the Calico team, the Calico school play against failed government school and against Sandman government school. And good talent. But I'm going to tell you this, man. I would be lying if I tell you that we don't have, we, we have room for improvement. Just the way that things are being prepared, there got to be more collaborative efforts. There got to be more things put in place. There got to be better training programs where these youths are going to be able to practice more, master their skills more better condition of playing fields where I mean you're young and you're not as good so you can't control like can I from Colin you know what I mean so then because of that if the fetus condition is not the best and you're just trying to learn you don't have the, to master the skill or the art of learning to control and pass then it makes it even harder for you because you're learning trying to learn a skill plus the field condition is not the best so as I said the playing facilities and everything has to be approved and also the preparation for these youth. I feel like we need to have coaches identified, you know, from the Football Federation. We have coaches, we have a staff, we have coaches who are qualified. Let them go out to these schools. Schools football can be playing and we don't have these coaches assigned to these schools. There got to be a way, there got to be a collaborative effort where these coaches got to be assigned to these schools. You know, there must be. Um, and, and I think with these things being done, it is definitely going to improve the standard. But pretty good talent, but definitely a lot more could happen in terms of the support and the training program and everything like that. And it could even get better. Yeah, but back in there, while we was growing up, primary, secondary school, they had superstars. Mm -hmm. for primary. Ken I was a household name. Chang was Ken a household I, name. Ken Brazilian, fame. Ken I, Chang, Ken I. Even with being in there with him in Trinidad, I said, can I? And I told him, I made my national team of 20. What time, what old did you make? Can I like, boy, chill. Boy, chill. <laughs> you ain't, you ain't. He said, Renzo, when I was 17 years old, I was 17 or 18. Yeah, him and, he said, him, fame and Chang. So, can I, fame and Chang, went right into that World Cup. Because I said to him, can I, you remember score and be sure? That World Cup slogan, score and be sure with the, with the 1992 campaign. Them time I was a little kid running to people's legs, just trying to jump over the fence in Annisville to get in, sneaking behind somebody when they passed the ticket. And he said, Ren said that I made that team coming in as a 17 year old, I think it was me, Chang and Fame. So yes, secondary school football was big, even in my time, winning, winning two different championships with Graham School and then with the community college, I won the, the two there as well. Even in my time, man, school finals, five, seven thousand people in Victoria Park easily. Yeah, man. That's why our rope. Ropes. <laughs> the rivalry right was crazy, too. The right oh, yes. Grammar school at St. Martin's. Oh, that grammar school St. Martin, man. I hate St. Martin players to this day because of that, man. <laughs> Them guys made me cry, man. That first finals. St. Martin, I think, defeated us in a semi finals. I cried. I then Century, what secondary with Pato Caswell, man. He beat us yeah. in the finals. I cried. And then that next year, boy, I took revenge on, on them boys. So it, it was good, but it was big, man. That, that school's football, huge. And um, so we got to get back to those days. But like I just said, everything I just told you concerning the support, the partnership, the sponsorship, the, 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 the preparation, the collaborative effort between the Ministry of Education, the sports department, you know, and, and the local football federation and the sponsors. These, these youths need encouragement. They, they got to be investment. You can't win. I got to say it, man. I got to say this. You can't win a school's football and you don't have price money. 
You can't win a school championship and you don't get a couple thousand dollars that you could put back into your school program. That you could, you know, help to buy some refreshments, help to buy a brand new uniform for the next year. You know what I'm saying? So these are things that got to change. Me as president, I can guarantee because I can't talk for nobody else. So me as president, you're not gonna, you're not gonna have an SVGF of secondary schools football and you don't, you don't get at least five, ten thousand or whatever for the winning team. I mean, come on. This is modern days. These kids need shoes. These kids need different things, you know. When I did a jingle ball event, when I did a jingle ball event and there in December, just by me hearing this, and I've spoken to coaches. I'm not gonna call the names, but I've spoken to coaches there coaching to do that in secondary school and primary school. And when I heard not even a dollar, I decided to give two hundred bucks each and a brand new soccer ball to the to the most outstanding primary school player to the most outstanding junior secondary school player and senior secondary school. At the jingle ball event, I gave them two hundred dollars each and a brand new soccer ball. We got encouraged these people. Yeah, I have to, we have to. But you know one name we didn't touch? You know, Archie. Archie was, Archie. A, Archie was a legend from prime yeah, from primary school to high school. Archie Valentine. Yeah man, a legend. Yeah, I heard that. I heard yeah, that. that. Yeah, I, I I obviously he was older than me, oh, so I didn't see that but he didn't do your yeah, we grew up together. One, he was better than Kenai. Huh? <laughs> he was better than Kenai at one time. Wow, bro. wow. <laughs> yeah, but I definitely heard he was. And I know even in that same World Cup 92 sojourn, when Kenai said he fame and Chang made that team, Archie actually came back. So big up to Archie, Derek, and Spragai. You know what I mean? Those guys came back there from New York. They were the foreign-based players that came to join that same team. So yes, Archie, and I've, 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 I've had the privilege to play with him there in New York as well. You know, I played with the high run with the high run irons when I when I moved up there just before I got my scholarship. And Archie's a pretty good player. But honestly, and no disrespect to him. I don't know him from like primary school. But if you're saying that then he was unbelievable, I am not surprised because Archie playing with him there in New York, I could see greatness. So I, I'm not yeah. surprised. We grew up together, man. Archie was oh. the, Archie was definitely senior team from um when we, in high school, for French oh. senior team. And that oh, team wow. was like Mitch Ballantyne, Awo, 20. <laughs> that team was not an easy team to make. And he was playing for that team. Wow. Yeah, man. Wow. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Yeah, you I gave me some history on Archie there, boy. When I come back to New York, I got to <laughs> salute Archie in a different way, boy. <laughs> that my people, good. That my people's men. So, yeah, um, man. So, um, okay. What about the league now? The quality of the league, soccer? What do you think? Aaron St. Vincent? Yeah. Um, Definitely, you know, with me doing my events and with me doing the showcase of the football and with jingle ball having a few thousand people there supporting it a few persons came to me and said ransom man you got to bring this you got to bring this to club championship our national local tournament needs this they, 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 they need it to be hyped and i said listen i've been doing this promotion for over 10 years here in st vincent so it, it it's like a second nature thing you know what i'm saying to let the people come out find ways to get the supporters out find ways to get these teams better supported find ways to make these teams more incentive like you see i did a video uh weeks ago about in increasing the price the price championship money for the national club championship you know th these youths cannot be playing for twenty thousand dollars or twenty five thousand dollars for an entire team just transportation alone for that entire six months of playing football bro it's almost it's it's in the thousands maybe about five thousand and then when you talk about different things, your uniform, two, three thousand, that's already eight, nine thousand. I mean, when you talk about paying your physio for an entire six months, that's going to be a couple of thousand. You have what, six, seven thousand dollars remaining to pay the rest of the team. That's not good. And the team got to do other things and the team got other preparation. So I made a pledge and I definitely going to keep that word, me as president, to improve that price money to 50,000 for the senior men. And 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 if the under if the if the lower division is ten thousand, that goes to twenty thousand. Why am I doing that? I was a manager of senior men's team. I'm not trying to give inside information, but I was made privy to know money is there. What the money is used for, it has to go back. Monies are being allocated to do different things. More money needs to go back to these teams. More money needs to go back to the preparation for these clubs. More money needs to go back into these community leagues where these leagues can get. I mean, come on. You have a league going on and you got to buy soccer balls. You got to go to a sports store to buy balls and you a league. You cannot be a league under the, the football federation and you got to buy soccer balls. That should be an expectation. You know, 
you, you got to get balls. These are things that should be supplied. The preparation, sponsorship. Why are we seeing these clubs and you, you see in these club championships and you're not seeing a local KSC or a local Iron Brewery or somebody branded in these club championships? Why aren't you seeing one uniform, like a Juma uniform? Every club plays in a Juma. But if you're from San Hill, your Juma going to be green and black. If you're from Avenues, it's going to be a red and yellow kit. You know what I'm saying? If you're from North Leeward Predators, might be a blue with something else. If you hope international, might be a, a red and a white with some black. One brand, one major sponsor. And all these teams have to do is basically come and play football with the preparation. It saves each team that couple thousand dollars that having to buy their own uniforms. These are the things I'm looking into. These are the plans. You know, when you look at schoolboy football in Jamaica, for example, you see DG Cell across every team jersey because DG Cell is a major sponsor. And if DG Cell is a major sponsor, well, then that sponsor covers the apparel for all these teams. So these are the things that I have to do, and I'm telling you it's going to lift the standard. You know, we need to we need to make these coaches for these clubs be more prepared. Have training programs for all the coaches for these clubs. Have a man, I'm going to have a management team teaching all of these clubs, doing workshops, doing seminars about how to manage football. Some of these clubs don't even, you know, they don't have good accountants to continue to, you know, to manage a budget of a team. They don't have the right programs where a manager of a team, how do you attire yourself on the sidelines? So, you know, all these support for these clubs and these leagues, you know, and with corporate St. Vincent on that, with, 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 with a parallel sponsorship and all of that, you cannot ask for anything better than that. These are the things I'm planning to implement. These are the things that I'm planning to put in place that would help improve from the playing on the field to the presentation, to the reward, to the accomplishments, to the achievements, everything. It helps with a holistic growth and preparation for football in St. Vincent and the Grenadines. Where I came from was on an international level. I've had the pleasure to be in overseas, travel all over the world to play soccer. And I'm bringing that to St. Vincent. We have this local mindset. We could do bigger things. We could get bigger things. We can achieve bigger things. We got to get out of that mindset that is just local and we know. We need, when you look on TV and you see sponsorship and you see preparation of coaches and preparation of programs and each team got different balls and equipment just given to them, these are the levels we got to get to here in St. Vincent. And that is part of my major plan. Nice, nice. I'm loving it. I'm loving it. So, um, you know, one day Graham up playing soccer back home, like, the league in tongue. It would be so nice because when the French is playing in Sign Hill, man, Ooh. the whole Ooh. Sign Hill coming out, bro. Yes, <laughs> you understand? Mm -hmm. The intention is being in the stadium was amazing because Sign Hill is singing, dancing, they have the, and the French is on their own stand and there, and the other people on the other stand. That was amazing back in the day, you know, it was a, a more community kind of vibes, you know? Well, you see, I, I and I'm going to tell you this, last year, was it last year? No, time flies. Last year, the year before. Time flies so quick. I think it's the year before. Right after we coming up to the COVID, I wanted to do like a, a, a Italy tournament. And then obviously, I know we're in, uh, for different reasons. I, I'm not going to get in that, get into that. But, you know, I wasn't allowed to do it. I wanted to do like a two, three weeks tournament. San Hill, like a, and call it the Community Shield. San Hill, Kingston, Calico, Leu, Baga, you know, and that. Um, I, I, I was not... I, I met with the federation and for different reasons they say incident, but I knew what it was. They just know that I was gonna come with this awesome idea of just so it was trimmed down to just three days. Three days when I did like and I had only eight teams because of because of the shortness of the time. I had to just see like eight teams. Sanil actually won that and it was a community shield, like a community's best of the best. And the finals was Sanil against I think it was Lee or one of them. And that was big, man. That weekend, I had it Friday, Saturday, Sunday, thousands of people. So that is exactly a replica of how it needs to be. And me, I'm telling you, community football is huge. Now I'm going to say this. True FIFA, FIFA support the clubs. FIFA, you're not going to really go to FIFA and say, oh, we have the Liu, the Liu community team and so forth. FIFA focus on clubs. But this is where the right management comes in. This is where having the right person as president comes in because now as a you have to be able to generate sponsorship generate endorsements generate funds where you could have these community shield 
Soon after the club championship is done, my plan is to move into the interleague, where the Lee you would, uh, you know, it's, which is like the, in, in the summer, because the club championship will be done. Then you go into the leagues, like the Calico League, the Liu League, the Baga League, the Georgetown League. And from each of these leagues now, you pick your all-star team. So now you have Calico coming up against Liu, San Hill coming up against Kingstown. That is what drives football as well. Because, listen, say what you want. It's big with club championship. But you see community football, like you're saying, listen, think back about Thompson Floodlight. That's all I got to say. Think back about Thompson Floodlight. See how the impact was. See how big that was. So we cannot forget these communities. We cannot forget these community tournaments. So in addition to the clubs, I have major plans to revive community football. Uh, we call it interleague, if it's, that's more familiar for persons. Reviving that in a level with the sponsorship and price monies, never heard of before. And why? Why am I this confident? Because I've been doing sports promotion for, for over 10 years. Because I have a relationship with corporate St. Vincent. When you look at my events and you look at the bottom with all my sponsors, I have relationships with them. They are very confident that if someone like me is there as president, they are going to invest. They want to be a part. Are they discouraged right now? Yes, they are. They're not, that, they're not too impressed with the way things are with football in St. Vincent right now. I promise them I'll make that change. They've reached out to me in St. Vincent. We are anticipating you being a president because we know for what you're doing with your football promotions here, we have a relationship with you. We are willing to partner with you. We wish you all the best and hope that you will be successful as president. And it's going to get definitely get to a different level. Wow. Nice to know. Nice to know. So if you, listen, if you just join us, we're speaking to Rensen. He's running to be the president of St. Vincent Football Federation. Wait, when is um, before we get to that, when is the election? March 21st, Thursday, March 21st. Nice, nice, nice. So, um, now, since I played soccer in the 80s, 90s, they're talking about floodlight soccer and a home for soccer. Now it's 2024. We're still not playing soccer in the night, and we still don't have a stadium, a home for soccer in St. Vincent and the Grenadines. Part of my plan as well. I know with regards to, let me touch base with the home of soccer first. I know there are other initiatives i would say you know you, listen this is football politics so you got to be careful with the words you know what i'm saying this home for football you know the current the current administration so let me put it that way the current administration is talking about several years now for home for football I've, i'm here into the grapevine obviously because i'm you know running for president i don't have the preview to information like before because I always had a good relationship with the guys at EFF and even the executive members. Now when me running for president, boy, I can't even get a listen. I don't even if because they will think I'm trying to use it against them because of my campaign, you know. So, um, but for what I've heard and for what I've known, I know there was official documentation there with the deed and everything with a piece of land purchase in the Leeward area, Bookament area for home for football. I have also was in another meeting this a couple of days ago with regards to some updates on that, which doesn't sound too pleasing, but I'm not going to get involved with that politics. But so what I'm going to tell you is me as president, that's definitely a priority. I've, I've heard that FIFA has already um, allocated funds for that. It's got to get going, you know, for lighting. The Brighton facility should be getting lighting very soon. We gotta get going it's been years when you look at the facility the camp facility there in brighton i mean listen man i was a manager to see the men's national team so i'm not going from here say bunk beds no nah, bro these are grown men grown men don't need to be on bunk beds you're not gonna bring trinidad and jamaica and costa rica and honduras here and they're gonna be it and now you have a sanders they're gonna be in sanders they're gonna be in a holiday inn they're gonna be at the grenadines house sun with comfortable rooms a condition flat screen TV in their comfort and senior men's and bunk beds. These are the things I've actually looked out. Look, I mean, listen, we have to change that facility, that technical center, that dorm area must be upgraded. We have senior men national team who are husbands, senior men national players who are husbands, senior men national players who got children. They, they work, some of them, you know, are professionals in different ways. And to tell somebody go be in a bunk bed, no, nah, bro, we got to change it. So the plans is, you know, you know, with the lighting there, the facility in Brighton, hopefully we get it sooner than later. 
there got to be different plans nationwide calico playing field was lit now the lights are down because of malfunctioning and it was a it was a safety threat because of some of the lights were actually you know you know there, there was actually a situation where lights were hanging just ready to break and there was actually a situation where one of them fell you know and these are weighing probably 25 30 pounds i mean god forbid someone was under that light when it broke and fell so because of that it took them all down the victory park that's the only lit playing field right now i think park hill or whatever but that's not that thing that's cricket we need more playing fields with we need to have night soccer when persons or when 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 corporate st vincent's are done with their busy day they come and look at a 6 and 8 p.m game when these players are done with a busy day they could go home and relax for two hours and come back at 7 p.m for for, for a club championship or community game when teams are busy and and because of the limits of playing fields Hope International want to use Sand Hill to train. But guess what? Sand Hill FC wants to use Sand Hill to train as well. So, okay, you, you do a shift system. Hope International, you come in at 5, 5, 5 30, and Sand Hill, you will come in at, you will come in at 7 30 because there is light. So, you know, these things create possibilities where we could do a shift system if we have light. Now, because we don't have light, every team got to come on different playing fields. I know what the Brighton playing field there has been overused because. We don't have you know brighton stumps calico i mean and everybody got to come and the national team got to train in that playing field and then they got so much clubs in the, in the community everybody can come and train at the same time so we need more late playing fields we need better preparation for the national technical center there for the national teams we need we need a full-time gym there at the facility of the technical center you know and i look at my boy atiba harris in st Pitts, who's the president there and he's showcasing that technical center there man it makes me feel bad. I'm gonna be honest. When you look at the when you look at the way things have upgraded there in, in St. Lucia, these folks, you know, I was in Trinidad there. And I'm driving by and can I say, look there, Renzo, because can I can I know? Renson, look there. That light is on, it comes off at 10. You go a few a few miles down, Renson, look, another field there. That light is on till 10. We coming back from the game on Sunday in Trinidad after 9 p.m. After 9 p.m. when Trinidad played the last game there against Canada on Sunday night. Tuesday night, sorry. On our way back, can I you're showing me Rens and I played some masters game here a few days ago. On that field at 10, about 10, 10, 15 p.m. Packed footballers on that field. I'm like, wow. Can I I did not know can I was like Renson, you ain't seen nothing yet. Bring the lights, the ballers are gonna come. Bring the lights, the passion is gonna come. Bring the better facilities. The players just need that support. The players just need the right things put in place. And I am telling you, Colin, we're going to see bigger and brighter days of football here in St. Vincent on a level never seen before. Who is promising you that? Who is very passionate about implementing these things? Myself. FIFA grants never even thought of to apply for. I got my inside peoples. I speak to so much person, football administration in different federations throughout the world different friends and different persons, even who know Renson, you know how much FIFA grant and how much applications you could do to get even more money. I cannot wait to be the president of St. Vincent and the Grenadines football. I'm going to be tapping into things that, you know, I got to give the plug. That none of these guys right now running for presidency, they don't even have a clue of the amount of things that you could tap into. That's my secret recipe. That sponsorship on these endorsements could come on a different level. Yeah, man. You know, one thing, the thing about lights too, right? Because parents, you know, you can walk, go, go home, fresh up yourself and come back and watch your kid play some soccer. Like I just it, said. It makes sense. <laughs> when, when, you, when you get home from work, you could relax for two hours, man. Get home at 4.30, you relax. Because guess what? Club championship starts 7, 7 p.m. and 8.30 p.m. These players, you some you don't got to worry about leaving work early or whatever. You go home, you relax for two hours. You drink some fluids, you, you cock your feet up, you relax. And then you head to the stadium at 6.30 because your game starts at 7.30, 8 o'clock. These are the things. These are the things, man. I've, I've, I've looked at the under-20 player there. Black man, I'm sorry, but I got to say this. He's a kid on the national under-20. He just in the recruiting for the police force. So this kid has to be in training camp with the police force. And then he has to rush back to train with the under-20 men's. 
And then after that, he got to rush back. I mean, this kid is so tired. And this is one of our national youth players. And just looking at him going, sometimes, you know, they gotta, he got to just take a couple of hours and sleep there on, 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 on the camp. The kid is tired. If we have lights, you know, I mean, this is just an example. Instead of having to rush these youths, these under 20 kids, I see them rushing from school. Some of them, they got to ask the schools to let them off early. They got to rush to go and train. They got to leave school at 2.30. You got to get to the playing field there. You got to change the clothes and you got to be there training full. And then by 6, 6.50, what happened? You're done. How good it would have been for these players to be able to get some rest. School is done. Go home, shower, change, get some hydration, relax. And like in an hour and a half, then you head out to training. You know? These are the things that lighting, we take lighting for granted, but I'm telling you, lighting puts a lot of things into better perspective. A whole lot. And for preparation. Yeah, man. You see make, make, a, make a lot of sense, man. So, yep. um, come back to the national team. So, when, um, okay, I know World Cup coming up, um, the qualifying for World Cup, right? So yes. How, how that works? The, the, the team, they just train like two, three day, days a week and then camp. Unfortunately, man, the way it has been done currently is like you would you would start your training. They're actually training right now. These senior men are training right now. They've been training for quite some time, I must say. I think they've been training for about I could be I could stand corrected, but I was thinking about maybe six weeks going now. The senior men seem to training and, and which is good. You know, kudos to Tian for bringing them out. You know, this early. Normally, you know, they would say, Oh, the team only come out a month or two before. Qualifiers is in June. And these boys are already there training, which is good. I applaud them for that. Um, you know, but in terms of preparation, I think a lot more could be done. I think that the technical director need more support. And this is not for me to say that he told me he needs more support. I don't want to get Tian in trouble or anybody to think that Tian Gordon come to me complaining because that's not the case. But like I would always say, this is, this is, this is what is good when you have someone running for president who was on that side of the fence. I was there. <laughs> I was on the national team. And I was also there as a manager of the senior national team. So I know, because I've lived it. I've lived it. I've seen it. I've, I've been in positions where I wish I could do more. And my hands were tied. I just couldn't. A lot of things I wanted to implement as a manager that I couldn't. I tried. I was blamed even for things that didn't work out or whatever. Unfortunately, and this is the reason why I know, me being that point person, me being that president, me being that person where I don't have to ask for permission for something I know that is right, for something I know that is better for the team and better for the coach and better for the preparation with the coaches. I, I want to be in a position where I don't have to ask and be disappointed. I want to be in a position where I don't have to ask and be given excuses that I know is BS. You know what I'm saying? Because I know that a lot more could be done. But the priorities are not there for the national for the players. The priorities are not there for the coaching staff the right way. Funds are allocated to do different things, which I which I was made known, which I made preview of. And I'm not gonna bring it up here, but just to let you know, when I see what funds are allocated for to do different things, I know the money is there. The issue is they were just not allocated, and they're just not allocated to do the right things where the priority is. So we could get better results. I am planning to fix all of that. Nice, nice. So, um, what gonna happen to the national team when they have the they have a match coming up? They say June, and I think I think um, Anis Vale is on construction. I'm gonna be um, busy with cricket. Colin, I spoke to an affiliate today, and I said to them, "You know, I already have my little headache going." They said, "Renson, what do you mean?" I say, "Because that's how proactive I am, Colin." That's how proactive I am, affiliates. And hopefully all of you will listen. I am already thinking, what are we going to do? Annisville is not, it's out of commission because of the World Cup cricket. So Vincent Beach Stadium is there. I see they just covered the bleachers. We don't have an administrative building there. We don't have a media center. We don't have dressing rooms. Cannot be used. We are already in March. Qualifiers is in June. If even if you were to tell FIFA, oh, we're going to get these buildings ready, FIFA don't play that. You got to have these things been ready for inspections. Because, for example, if you're telling FIFA I have a new venue, in March, 
pay for what we were already being this month, for example, or probably even earlier. Okay, you told us that you just built dressing rooms to accommodate a national game. We want to come and inspect. You can't be doing something in April or May and thinking it's done. And because of the, the heavy construction, they will not be done in time. So the Sir Vincent B. Stadium is out. What do we do? I'm thinking now me going in there as president. I know my boy Marlon Gleaney and Grenada, the president. I know the last time St. Vincent went and played. The senior men's played in Grenada. The female played in Trinidad. You know? Uh, these are possibilities. Unfortunately, Colin, we don't have anywhere else to play but going out of side, outside of St. Vincent. Maybe St. Lucia got to be an option. But I, I promise that, you know, June is already upon us. It's inevitable. We can't do anything about it. You know, you have the election on the 21st. New executive goes in end of the end of this month. You got two months. You can't, you, you can't, you can't build, you can't build a stadium or have things in. So unfortunately, we have to go to a neighboring country. And these are the things that, you know, like I said, have to be addressed as soon as possible. Part of my first 11 plan is to get things going with the home of football and get lighting, dressing rooms and everything. But I'm going to tell you, though, I think that Sir Vincent Beach Stadium is the best bet we got, the best possibility we have right now to upgrade because of the soccer field in the middle of the tracks. It's a full-side FIFA certified in terms of dimensions to play full-side FIFA or full soccer. So as long as we get those administrative buildings there and things put in place or dress rooms or whatever, it could be ready. I think that's the closest we have in terms of preparing a venue. After the World Cup cricket in June, I'm guessing, you know, if we do well in these World Cup qualifiers, we're going to have games after June, obviously. So we will go back to Annesville, but we cannot sell it for Annesville. We have to get a home for football. So simultaneously, this year, getting in office, got to start working on that plan for a home for football so we could permanently have a venue designated for St. Vincent's and the Grenadines football. But, Renson, that you guys, um, the Federation are losing money because if they have the home games, they could make some money for um, to help them out, right? Listen, Colin, you, you really want to get me in some things. No, 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 I, no, no, I'm not saying No, 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 what, what I'm saying that is, is no, I didn't mean that. I mean yeah. that I got told my shots, man. But listen, this is politics, right? Football, it's, 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 it is what it is. Those two last home games could have played in St. Vincent. Those two last home games could have played in St. Vincent. I just think that we should have had meetings. We should have had preparation earlier. When they shut down Annisville playing field to get ready for that, for those games, my phone, my bad, you're dying a bit here. When they shut down those those prop doors, those, I think we could have had emergency meetings and asked them to go one week later. Had it gone, the, the shutdown was, I think, was a day before we had that game in Grenada. One day before. I think it was on the 20th of July. And I think that game was the 21st or the 22nd. Are you telling me that we could not have pushed that out a couple of days later? The, the ladies, I think that was, I think was November, right? I, I can't remember the date. I think it was November 21st or November 22nd, whatever. And then the females was in early December. We could have, all we could have asked was a few more days. Now we had to spend a lot of money going, trap, taking both teams to Grenada and Trinidad, like you said. Cost the, the FF hundreds of thousands to go into someone else's home stadium where you have no supporters, where you have no fans, where, where you can't sell any tickets because these Grenadians don't, no disrespect, but they don't care to go to a game supporting St. Vincent. They want to beat St. Vincent. You know, they 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 they're like so the stadium was half empty as we would know and not had, but critically practically empty. But these are the things. Sponsors, endorsement, home tickets, we lost out on so much money. The mobilization to get these teams in Trinidad and in Grenada for the senior women's and the senior men's respectively those last two home games. I'm telling you, Colin, that's why, that's why I said earlier, I don't want to say like I'm getting it, but I'm going to say it. Me being a president of football, listen to me, man. If I would have had to sleep in that sports office, National Ministry of Sports, I would have sleep, I would have cry, I would have beg, I would have ball. I would have made sure them understand. Close Annisville just a few weeks later, please. You know what I did, Colin? 
when we closed that official stadium and we had that game in Grenada, I had someone go there in Annisville. Go in Annisville, look and see if anything is going on there. Nothing. So we could have easily played that home game there in Annisville by shutting that a few weeks later than it was. Who we had? We didn't have the right voices. We didn't have the right people to sit there and convince the Ministry of Sports and, and, and the Sports Council. This is what I'm saying. I'm not just somebody because I was a former national player and because I was a senior men's manager. I'm someone who want to come with a voice and an impact and an influence to be able to, to conference and influence corporate St. Vincent, convince the government, have the right conversation, let the government understand this is a buy-in for not just a football federation, but for you, the government, for you, the sponsors. Have sponsors reaching out to the government saying, listen, the football federation is correct. We are losing money. Corporate St. Vincent is not happy. Why do we have to go to Grenada? Why do I would have made a case that we would not have been denied. Make rent in the president, and we wouldn't have to worry about these things in the future. And this is not me being cocky. This is not me being arrogant. This is me being confident. I know who I am. I know what relationships I have. But I'm telling you, had these things been done, we would have had those games. But we didn't have the people who were passionate enough, who would go on a roll and cry, in the Ministry of Sports and even in the Prime Minister office and beg, beg to the point where they would have said, you know what, Renson, we can't go with you, boy. You too, you too. Okay, you know what? All right, play the game, play the game, play the game. We, we, all right, all right, we will close after. This has to be the passion. This has to be the commitment. This has to be the determination. If you don't have that passion, if you don't have the commitment, don't consider running for presidency of football because you know why? It's going to happen again. It is going to happen again. Because even when Annisville reopens, there are going to be other crickets coming up. And we can't just get another place ready in a month. So these things are going to happen. Qualifiers start in June. What are we going to do in October? Whatever construction we start, it would not be done this year. So we need this same voice, this same passion, this same commitment for even this coming summer. Because we got football starting in June. We cannot afford to after June want to say oh we got cricket no let me talk to the to the to the cricket association let me reach out to Kishaw shallow and man listen call icc man let's talk something like we gotta we gotta look at the schedule and figure out you know see if you can cut a deal you know cricket cricket okay you come into st vincent all right i meet with the cricket association listen let's look at the pros and cons no disrespect to the cricketers but how about you play your game in st lucia let's play this worker qualifiers in st vincent because we are anticipating ten thousand people in Anisville. No disrespect to your cricket. But if you are winning Ireland's cricket, play it in St. Lucia. Play a game in St. Lucia. In fact, we, the Football Federation, want to help you get your team to St. Lucia. Because the world, you know soccer, Colin. Soccer is big. I mean, and there's no disrespect to cricket. But what I'm saying is, sometimes you got to look at pros and cons. So cricket might be having on its schedule. Be the president who could convince the cricket association where you could cut a deal, where you could some sort of deal where the cricketers could maybe go to Grenada just for that one weekend. Because we have a worker qualifiers who want to play in St. Vincent and we don't want to surrender it for cricket. So you make these negotiations, have a voice who could make these negotiations, and then soon as we get our home for football, we would not have to worry about these things anymore. All right. Okay, Renson, give me two minutes. Get your water because we come back. Why you lay out your, your plans as a president 